By a show of hands, how many of you would say that you're open to change? Okay, that's great. Now I bet if I asked how many of you would be as open to change if a member of your organization, maybe even a new employee, came in and actually suggested that you change one of your daily routines. The show of hands always goes down. I believe that it's a natural instinct to resist change, especially when it has to do with a routine that's so ingrained in a company's culture, or maybe even our own DNA. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So instead, we often offer the old, thanks, but I'll stick to how I've always done it. You would think that with the buzzwords of today's corporate culture, like innovation, creativity, and empowerment, we would be seeking new ideas, looking for new ways to be doing things. But often, we are not. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about what we mean when we say, that's the way I've always done it. And we're also gonna explore ways to break free from this mindset. In 2012, my husband and I started our own business, designing and manufacturing wooden signs, decor, and furniture. Fast forward seven years later, we make about 20,000 pieces a month. So to say that we use a lot of lumber would be an understatement. The lumber comes in in long, varying lengths, many of them up to 16 feet long. Well, when we first started, we would take each of these long boards and lay them out and paint them. We would then again pick up these long heavy boards and we set them all around our workshop and we waited for them to dry. Then one by one, we would again go back and take each of these long heavy boards and we cut them down to size. I have to say, we were actually pretty proud at how efficient this process was that we created. But a few years ago, we hired a lean expert to come in. He was there to look at all of our manufacturing processes. But you know the one that he suggested we changed first, our long, heavy board painting process. He actually suggested that we cut the boards and then painted them. But we all resisted. And the number one reason we had is that's not how we always did it. And we were, after all, paying him, so we had to try it his way. So we started cutting the boards and then painting them. And lo and behold, he was right. We saved so much time, freed up all the space in our workshop, and also started to produce far less scrap. We look back at those photos from the original days and wonder, what on earth were we thinking? But it's one thing when a paid expert comes in and offers their advice. What about a fellow team member, a new boss, an employee, or even a spouse? Why is it that we are so resistant to the opinions of others? Harvard's Rosabeth Moss Cantor explains one reason why it might be hard. She says that when somebody else comes in and suggests a new or better way of doing something, we often feel a loss of face and that change is a departure from the past. Those associated with the last version, the one that didn't work out, the one that is getting superseded, really start to become defensive. And I have experienced this defensiveness firsthand. When we moved our business from a home to our large commercial facility, we also hired new employees to support our growth. But as the original team started setting up, they literally replicated every process exactly as they had done it in our home. But the new employees were unencumbered by the past, and they suggested ways that we could change. But every idea was met with, that's not how we've always done it. And soon, the clash between the new team and the old team led to so much distrust and miscommunication. And our productivity seriously decreased. We couldn't believe how this loss of face was truly impacting our business operations. We had to do something. So we got all of the employees together, the old and the new, and we looked at every single process. We looked at exactly how we had always done it, and together decided if there could be a better way to do it. And in some cases, we determined that how we had always done it was the very best way to keep doing it for that moment. But in other cases, we made change. 
Together, we all learned that by combining the way we'd always done it with fresh new perspectives resulted in the most efficient way possible for our growing business, for our employees, and also for our customers. I believe that the phrase, that's the way we've always done it, is the most expensive in any organization. And I'm not just talking about financial cost. Yes, of course, you're gonna save time, you'll save on materials, but I'm talking about how those words can truly stifle creative ideas that otherwise would propel an organization to greater success. Often, when we stick with the way we've always done it, we're suggesting that maybe we're too scared to give an opportunity of new ideas or even to accept a change. Maybe we're afraid that it might add a ton more work to our already busy days. Or maybe we're afraid our role might become obsolete within an organization. Sometimes that is the case, but most often it is not. Usually, there is so much work to be done within an organization that a change to one burdensome process can open doors to new skills or opportunities. That's why it's so important for leaders to really explain the why behind any change, both big and small, and demonstrate how changes can truly benefit the employees as well as the greater good. Now let me ask you a question. Did you ever resist changing something but you actually couldn't even remember why you did it a certain way to start? Let me share a story with you. My husband loves my mother's banana bread, so she often bakes it for him. When we first started dating, she brought down some banana bread, I unwrapped it, I sliced off the ends, and I threw them away. My husband was horrified. He could, couldn't believe what I did not ask me what I was doing. So I shrugged and said, that's how my mother always did it? Well, it turns out in my family, nobody likes the ends. But the ends are my husband's favorite part. <laughs> So, we no longer do that in our home anymore. I do, after all, want to stay married. But lessons like this are so valuable. They teach me the importance of pausing, reflecting, and trying to figure out why I do things a certain way. They have also taught me the importance of pausing, reflecting, and think about why am I not willing to try something in a new or different way? Often, I believe it's lack of confidence in our own competence. We wonder, if we change, will we be any good at it in the new way? Does anybody remember how we got anywhere before Google Maps or Waze? I mean, we used to commute to work the same way every single day. We sat in these long traffic jams and we had no idea that if we just got off a few exits sooner, we could have saved all this time. So if you're anything like me, I get in my car, I plug in my destination, and I look for the best, most optimal route at that given moment in time. It's a game changer, but only for those that are willing to try this new way. Let's take my dad, for example. He held on to his physical maps, even though he knew there was a much better way that we were all starting to use. Maybe he thought his maps were more reliable, but I believe that it was within his comfort zone, that he lacked confidence in trying this new technology, and that maybe he wasn't gonna be any good at it. I have to say, thanks to my mother's coaching and lots of patience, my father broke free and now has a new way of getting to destinations. That is if he remembers to take his phone with him, but that's just a whole different story. When it comes to breaking free from the way I've always done things, the biggest lesson I've learned is I have to check my ego at the door. And trust me, that's so much easier said than done. I try to lead a culture where change is embraced. But often, when somebody has an idea better than mine, it stings. That's human nature. But when I stop and get over myself and truly listen to the ideas around me, I am so pleasantly surprised. I encourage employees at all levels of any organization to be creative and share solutions. But the problem with that is that not every idea is viable. We can't automatically adopt 
every idea. The key is to review the pros and the cons behind every suggested change. Will it achieve a net positive result? It's also equally important to help people understand the difference between changing simply for the fact of changing and embracing innovation for the greater good. Now, the difference is if you do actually suggest an idea to somebody and you decide that you're not going to move forward with it, you need to pause and talk to them. Help them understand that you heard them. Show them that their ideas are valued. But you must give them valid reasons why you're not going to move forward. At the same time, you must also tell people if you are going to move forward with a change. Because you know there will be people who will say, that's not how we've always done it. And really help them to understand. Because the key to changing any culture is open, consistent communication. And this is often the most forgotten, but most critical step. So we've all admitted here today that we tend to resist change in one way or another. But the only way to break free from that is to really try to understand what's behind our fear and hesitancy in this resistance. So in closing, I offer these words of advice. The next time an opportunity for change comes your way, go get yourself a loaf of banana bread. Slice off those ends and contemplate. Is it your fear of losing face? Is it your fear of losing your job? Do you not think you'll be able to do it as well in the new way? Do you have an unchecked ego? Or maybe you just don't understand the why behind the change. And once you figure it out, Go ahead and eat that banana bread, but promise yourself that you will never again say those words. That's the way we've always done it. We're not gonna all create the next Google Maps, but keep in mind that one small change to how you always do something can have such a big impact in your daily life. Thank you.